is part of the Christmas Advent Beer Review series and I thought I'd do a kind of a slightly different profile. So we're going to do this one standing up. Hopefully it'll work out okay. So today we're going to be doing another kind of Aldi copying another kind of main brand. So today we're going to be doing a Bira Mapelli. Which is, seems to be kind of Aldi's kind of not so subtle copy of Moretti, the Italian beer. Now this one is 4.6%. I think it's roughly about 120, 130 a bottle. It's a 500 ml bottle, and. Uh, there's not really any kind of spiel apart from it. They say it's a premium lager and it's from Italy. And it's made from German and Austrian barley malts. So there you go. So let's see what it's like. Because again, we haven't really done that many um, lagers on the channel recently. So we want to kind of catch up with that because of course lots of people drink lager. And lager can be very nice and refreshing. And again at this time of year, Lots of people like to drink lager. So let's see if this is any good. Right, so it's uh, goes okay. It's good carbonation, about a one finger head. Yeah, roughly. Yeah, for the end of my guys of this world. Yeah. You're getting grass, grain, some slight sweetness there, getting a lot of effervescence, the head's kind of slightly prone crackery so it probably won't last about that long, and yeah, let's see what it tastes like. Oh, it's a bit gassy. Um, But yeah, hmm. right, let's kind of break down these flavours. It's, um, you're getting sweetness to start with, and you're getting that kind of lager -y kind of sweetness, that multi sweetness. Then it kind of goes to a kind of dryness, you're starting to get a kind of bit of a dryness coming across the kind of mid tongue. And then it's finishing off with just a, there was a slight kind of, how would you say, crisp, bitter kind of aftertaste, but not bitter as in bitter, bitter, but obviously bitter compared to the initial um, front of the mouth kind of flavour profile, which is kind of multi sweet. So, yes, you're getting a little bit of kind of dryness, that kind of little kind of bitterness. You know, the kind of crispness that you want, that you're getting at the end. And then it dissipates. Obviously, the more you hold it in your mouth, the more of the kind of, well, the longer the bitterness is there. And, uh, but yes, yeah, so you just take a normal sip like you would probably do, like, Yeah. It's more of a tonal change really than a kind of bitterness, but if you hold it then you will get kind of slightly of a slightly kind of bitterness in the in the flavour, but it's not bitter in any way. The problem is you can't really say bitter without people thinking of lemons and that, but it's not that kind of style. It's uh it's actually quite a light beer. You get a getting that kind of grassy tones as well, which again is from the hops and the aftertaste as well. So that's again, that's probably helping with that little bit of kind of bitterness, that kind of change of, of accents. So instead of being kind of a, a sweet accent, then a kind of dry accent, kind of blending towards a kind of more bitter accent at the end in the aftertaste. And again, that kind of is coming from the hops. And uh, yeah, and again, he's got that kind of little kind of grassy or kind of grainy 
kind of flavour within the aftertaste as well, which again it actually comes from the hops and not actually from the grain. Yeah, clever that, isn't it? Let's get a flavour profile that you probably think coming from one ingredient, but it actually comes from another ingredient. But yeah, so yeah, it's uh, not a bad beer actually, not bad at all. And yeah, I think the price is here around about one pound twenty, one pound thirty. We tried, what have we tried? We've tried St. Etienne from Aldi and we've also tried Rossini. How would I compare this? Well, one good thing, it's in a brown bottle, which again is the same as Moretti, funnily enough. And uh, obviously that protects the beer from skunking. Um, obviously if it was a darker brown bottle it would be even better, but uh, this colour of brown bottle is still better than say, the likes of a green bottle or a clear bottle. So there you go. I, uh, I think I actually prefer this. If I, if I compare it to the other two Aldi lagers that I've tried, which was Rossini and St. 18. St. 18, well, it just wasn't quite there with the flavour profiles. And uh, it was 99 pence and it showed. There was a big difference between that and Rossini. Rossini, yeah, it was quite a nice beer. The thing I felt was that for the price point, I thought it was a bit too expensive. I thought if you were, it was supposed to be a kind of a copy of Peroni, the Italian beer. And I didn't think it was quite there as a, as a comparison really. And going with the price at one pound kind of 30, you'd be better off maybe paying that little bit extra, maybe going for the Peroni. If it was cheaper, if it was closer to a pound, maybe one pound, one pound ten max, then I would have probably said, yeah, the Rossini would be a good option. But with uh, the price being one pound thirty, and it's not that far away from the price of uh, Peroni, then I thought the Rossini just didn't really quite have enough to justify it. Whereas this, this is obviously cheaper than Moretti. It's still roughly about the kind of similar price as Rossini. But what I would say is I prefer this. I think this is a better beer flavour wise than the Rossini and way, way better than St. Etienne. And uh, with the price of Moretti, because Moretti is actually usually more expensive to buy than say a bottle of Peroni. So the gap between this and Moretti, um, price wise, is bigger. But flavour profiles, they're actually closer. What I want to do in the new year is look at these and actually compare them. Get Moretti and get this beer get the Peroni and the Rossini together and basically review them side by side and see how close they really are because that's probably really the best way than just kind of working from what you remember as their flavour profiles. But yeah, not a bad beer. Price is okay. How does it compare to the mainstream? Well, it's more expensive than you know more mainstreams like Foster's and uh, there's a Stella and Carling and things like that and even Budweiser per bottle if you're kind of competing with them in multi-packs and the supermarkets giving all the big kind of deals but flavour wise I think it's a more interesting flavour and as you can see quite a lively beer it hasn't really gone down I mean the head has obviously dissipated a bit but hasn't gone to the kind of old kind of mill pond that we maybe expect to it's a wee bit gassy though um, a bit gassy, but the mouse feels quite nice. Mm. Maybe ever so slightly, you know, gassy. But in general, the mouse feels quite nice. You can drink it quite easy. It's nice and light, nice beer profiles. So yeah, I would recommend it. Out of five, what would I give it? I'm actually going to give this I'm going to give it a 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2.8, 2
out of five. Not a bad price. Quite a good beer. I would recommend it. It would be nice to get a couple of these in in the summer. It would be also nice to, once we've done a review side by side, to see exactly how close or how far away they are compared. But in general, not a bad beer. 2.8 out of 5. Yeah, I would recommend it. Why don't you get some and try it? Anyway. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And bye for now.